I'll read you something to Deuteronomy about what Israel was doing. How it would do right, then it would do wrong. It's still going on today. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a testimony to that fact. It says, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy <coughs> God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldn't say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither it beyond the sea that thou should say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and thy heart, that thou may do it. If you're here today and you're a saved person, you know right from wrong. We know yeah. what we should be doing. We know we should be doing more for Jesus Christ. So as I read these verses and think about it, let's just hear what he says. He says, But the word is very nigh to thee in the mouth of heart, that thou may do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. There is a division coming. You're going to be either going this way or that way. On those tracks you have in your pocket. Don't look at them now. But there's sin and salvation. There's going to be decisions made in your life whether you want to make them or not. And so he says, In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgment, that thou may live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. See, you're going to get blessings by serving the Lord Jesus Christ. He will bless your life. But it says also, but, there's a but here. But if thine heart turn away, that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce you that this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon this land, whether thou passeth over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. That's what's set before us today. It's set before you ever. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thou seed may live. In other words, if you choose the right way, your family most likely would be more apt to choose the right way. And if you're going the wrong way, your children are going to go the wrong way. That thou may love the Lord thy God, and that thou may obey his voice. That thou may cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy day. Do you believe he's the length of thy day? Amen. I'll tell y'all a short story. About a month ago, the 28th of March, I got up in the morning and I was going to turn over a new leaf. I went and wrote my weight down on the calendar. You know how you do when you're going to start exercising. I worked out on the treadmill. I felt great. I went shopping with my wife most of the day. I come back home, I said, I feel better today than I felt in weeks. I felt great. Little did I know, I walked down to the barn with a handful of grapes to the boat, ate a grape, and got a pain in my chest. The time I got back to the house, I knew this was no normal pain. I told my wife, get your clothes, get in the car. I've got a heart problem. we got to get to Chesterfield. She said, well, wait, i got to get the clothes. I said, just grab the clothes. Don't worry about what you got on. we got to go. We had always said if something ever happened, we wanted to get to a Chesterfield hospital. That's where I've been before. And that was our plan. We jumped in the car. We're driving down the road. I call a rescue squad. I said, I'm having chest pains. Both arms are hurting all the way down. I'm sweating. I think I'm having a heart attack. They said, where are you? I told them I was on, almost on 153. And, and we were trying to get to Chesterfield. And we would intercept a, uh, a rescue squad somewhere down there about 360. I was, that, that was my plan. Well, as we went on, he said, I can't do nothing. If you don't stop, I can't send no one to you, and you'll have to make arrangements down the other way. As we were going down the road, all of a sudden, something just said, okay, we'll stop. I'm right here where that old church burnt down on 153. Y'all know where that oh, is. Yeah. We pulled up in there, and we sat there. As we sat there for about 15 minutes, I kept thinking, we should have kept going. My wife is sitting there crying and praying. She said, we should have kept going. By now, we would be at 360. We would be almost there. But see, Lord had his hand in it. I didn't know what was going on. When the rescue squad got there, I walked over and I got in the rescue squad and I sat down 
and they were sticking needles in me and popping uh, those nitroglycerin pills that I had never had into me. And I was just talking to them and, and acting, uh, you know, crazy. I said, well, that guy on this side really hurt me with a needle. This guy didn't hurt at all. I mean, I was of sound mind and body talking to these people and that type thing. And thinking, you know, this ain't that bad. I took my wind band off my knife, gave it to my wife, said, y'all, I'll be okay. Ain't no big thing going on in here. Well, I'm sitting there. I know everything that's going on. I'm not knocked out. And all of a sudden, it was like the room wanted to make a quick twist, like somebody jumped at you. I mean, it was like it almost went dark, but it didn't. I don't know if I screamed or if I didn't. The guy says, you're all right. Everything was clear again. I heard him say, bird. And I started praising God because I knew that I would have died on that road. They say I flatlined. My pulse stopped. They had to bring me back. That's how close I was to death. Now, you don't think God has to do with the length of your days oh, yeah. and the decisions oh, yeah. we need to make? Yeah. So as I laid there on that thing, I was just in the greatest mood in the world. I was singing <laughs> hallelujah, praising God all Amen. the way and just feeling for the people outside. Mm -hmm. There was not one fear in me. I had yeah. not one fear because the Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. I had no fear. That was what was so amazing. But what I want to tell you, there was one thing I didn't have to worry about that day was if I did die, was I going to hell or to heaven? What a terrible way it would be to get that close mm -hmm. and then say, Lord, save me. Or have mine to be able to say that. There was a crossroads right there. God stopped me right there. If I would have kept going, I would be dead today. He gave me another chance. He says he will do with your length of day. So if you're here today and you're not saved, the decision time is here. That track I gave you shows sin and salvation. If I had a died, that's the way it would have went. At least my two sons would have known who I was. It was a sad situation. Later I heard my younger son say, I'm not ready for this. My older son said, as I got into that helicopter, I'll never fish with my dad again. But even with those thoughts, they would know I would be in a better place. Are your people going to know that you're in heaven when you go? Are they going to know that? It was a sobering situation. When I went across that field, I was hollering to everybody, hey, hey, I'm all right, hey, hey, give them a thumbs up. Getting in the back of that, that plane. And see, God knew I needed to get there quick. I never thought of earning a med fire. And I'd never flown in anything, and I never wanted to fly in anything. But you know what I thought? Well, the weather's today is pretty good. There's no turbulence. It shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm puking for all I'm worth, and that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I'm in the shadow of the valley of death, and that's what I'm thinking. Is the wind blowing the right way? God is so good. And I'm just telling you, get a hold of him now. Don't keep putting him away. You don't know when you're going to need him, but you're going to need him. And you're going to need him quick. And he will come. Let's pray. Pastor Rue, you close us in prayer today. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder that, Lord, I hope these words echo into every mind and heart today that we are one breath from death. Yeah. And, Lord, I just pray that you'd use the testimony, the word of God today to speak to any precious soul here today yeah, that Lord. just does not have it settled. Yeah, you Lord. know yeah. I don't. Thank you, Lord, for the time we've been able to have today. I pray that God should keep us all safe on the water. Pray you'll give us all a good day. And Father, once again, we want to thank you for your word and the testimony from one of your servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.